The Wild Rose Independence Party of Alberta is, well, all about independence from what it calls an oppressive overlord government in Ottawa. Kathy Flett, now that the Fair Deal panel has issued its report, says, okay, it's now time to set a date on a vote to separate. Her patience and her belief that leaders in central Canada will come to realize the contribution of Alberta to Confederation has worn thin. Call a vote, she says. Wrestle the issues to the ground in the run-up to the referendum, and then let's see what the voters of Alberta have to say. Ottawa won't be able to ignore Alberta if a vote is called, she points out. I invited Kathy Fleck to join me for this episode of Western Alienation. Kathy Flett, welcome. You say this has gone beyond alienation, that the only course of action is separation. How come? What makes you say there is no turning back? Because Albertans have just been kicked down so many times. There's only so much abuse you can take before you hit your breaking point and you say, that's it, I'm done, it's, it's time to go. And enough of Albertans have hit that breaking point now where we're just ready to go on our own. In another interview for this series, Danny Hozak, he too called the relationship abusive as well. It is very harsh language, uh, and I can't help but ask, does it not sadden you that we are at this point? Absolutely, because where there's an abusive relationship, you know that at one time it probably wasn't that way, right? And so there's there's a mourning that takes place. There's there's people who live in Alberta who are from other parts of our country. And so it's still one big home to them. And so when, when we talk about that, yeah, this is an abusive relationship. It's time to leave. It's time to get out. For some of those Albertans, that it means a little bit more than just leaving Canada. It means they're going to need a passport to go visit their family the next time that they go or um, that their family is going to need a passport to come and visit them. So there's all these different layers that people go through when it comes time to, to get a divorce, if you will. But at the other side of it, I haven't heard anybody who got a divorce and regretted it either. So there's always that way of looking at it too. <laughs> it will not be an easy process. And while there is growing support for separation, it is only at about 20%, maybe 25%. Do you think support for separation will increase if the issue is called to a vote? If we do it right, I think it will. Um, you know, most polls hold it at 25%. I think if you get out into rural Alberta, you'll see that number is actually quite a lot higher. Um, and those, th that's not the population that's often captured in those votes, but that's who we're talking to, right, is rural Alberta, because they're the ones that are hurting the most. Now, as far as getting everybody to that vote, it's got to be done properly. It's got to be done pragmatically. One of the challenges with Canada is that federal government and provincial government are very intertwined, right? The feds have got their tentacles in our business left, right, and center, it's like that on purpose. So to tear that apart is going to take a long time. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of pieces to that puzzle. How I see it happening, for Albertans in particular, I can't speak to the other provinces, they've all got their own issues, but for Albertans, what I wanna see is, is we get that firewall enacted that, that any Albertan who's over 35 knows about, right? Get that firewall enacted. Get things in-house. And, and then, once all that's left is the equalization payment, it's up to Albertans to decide. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take the keys to your own home and keep that money? Or do we stay? And I think if we do it that way, it's really a win-win. Everybody now, we do our own tax collection, we've got our own pension, we've got our own EI, we, we're pretty much autonomous within the country. And at that point, Albertans can say, yep, we're done. And it's up to them. Does that suggest that you think Premier Kenny was right in establishing the Fair Deal panel? I think he's moving in the right direction because he's helping us prove there's no such thing as a Fair Deal panel. So we very much encourage him <laughs> to go right on ahead and prove that that is not going to happen. It's not going to be a reality for Albertans. We will never get a Fair Deal 
we will never get a fair deal. But I, I'm glad he's putting the work in behind it. So, so you see it as a step that moves the dial and allows Albertans to become more comfortable with the idea of cessation. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. You're on record as saying the Constitution is stacked against Alberta. How so? When you go all the way back to 1905, when we were brought in, right? We weren't even, we didn't get a vote. We were, Alberta was like, Kate, you're part of us now. This is how it's going to be. We were actually brought in in a very colonial style manner. And, and the whole purpose for bringing Alberta and Saskatchewan in was to support the East. That it's, it's in history. It's, it's recorded in history that that was the reason. And the reason that Alberta and Saskatchewan were separated into two different provinces so, was so that we would never have the population base to actually have the same amount of seats. That was the Prime Minister of the day, Sir Wilfrid Laurier, who said on record he did not want the West to have too much power in what was then the Northwest Territories, which included what are now Alberta and Saskatchewan. So to ensure that that was the case, uh, this mass of territory was then sectioned off so it could never hold the balance of power in Ottawa. And ever since, Albertans have felt the deal was stacked against them. Exactly. And it has been. Have you seen the uh, cartoon about the milch cow? Yeah, it makes the rounds every so often again, right? And it's just as, as perfect today as it was then. And it wasn't about oil back then. Oil hadn't been developed. But it was still about taking from the natural resources of Alberta to feed the bank accounts of central Canada. So we move forward. Prime Minister Trudeau, the senior, rewrote the Constitution, and you contend he did so with contempt for Alberta. Trudeau made no bones about how he felt about Alberta back in the day when, when he was in power, right? I mean, I was just a little, little girl at the time, but I still, I still remember, and I remember the conversations around, around the kitchen tables that the adults in the room were having and how it wasn't, uh, sorry, it, um, it wasn't very friendly. It's interesting that you mentioned the separatist movement back in the 80s. The sentiment back then was incredibly heated, very strong feelings, but then faded away with the boom in the energy sector. Well, now that robust energy sector has greatly diminished um, due to a combination of factors that include international oil prices, the unwillingness of Quebec to provide Alberta oil access to Eastern Canadian markets, and a piling on of environmental rules, regulations, and taxes. And now, in the midst of the COVID crisis, there's a lack of support for Alberta's energy sector, um, and combined or coupled with chirping from the Green Party and block to deny support. And then there was the manner in which the gun control legislation was decreed. From your perspective, where are we now regarding the mood of Alberta about rewriting the agreement with Ottawa? I think the difference between then and now is... Back then, it was predominantly an economic reason. It was economically driven the, to, to separate. Today, it's deeper than that. Now, it, economics plays a huge part. Yes, we've been in a politically induced recession for five years. It, it, there's no other reason other than politics that put Alberta in this place, uh, which then now lends itself to the moral reasons for leaving. And that's the difference. That's the difference. That our rights are being eroded and taken away. Just regular, everyday rights that we should have, we're losing left, right, and center because of a, well, I don't I call him a communist government because he is. That's exactly what, what he's trying to instigate and implement. So now it's deeper. Now it's the moral reasons for wanting to leave. You know, there are many who say Alberta is in this economic crisis because it's wedded to oil, that it is a single focus economy, and the situation is a product of its own making. And that's not even true, because the whole rest of the world was firing on all cylinders when we weren't, because we weren't allowed to get our oil out to market. So how can that be? How can you look at the U.S. and go, well, how are they at, in Texas, at 1.2.5% employment? Their oil. They're just like us. So that argument is out the window. It has nothing to do with that. And as far as a diversified economy in Alberta, 
We are diversified. It's just that the other resources that we have aren't always talked about. We've got an exceptional farming and agriculture economy in here. That, that resource sector is huge. It's huge. And people are going to start to feel it now because this whole COVID thing shut down three of our meat plants and there's no meat on the shelves. Where do you think that came from, right? Um, we've got forestry. We, we have got tourism. And now Banff and Jasper are hurting because of COVID. And that, that's, a, that's a big, huge deal. Like people don't understand. People from all over the world come to see the mountains. And now that can't happen. And so that industry is hurting. There's a manufacturing industry that's here. There's, there's all sorts of things, but we just don't always, we're, we're not very good yet at talking about it. Well, the, the, well, the forces that say the energy sector is the root of all evil have done an excellent job of sharing that message and that the energy sector should be allowed to die. Those kind of sentiments do not help in the sense of feeling like you are a part of Canada. Not Albertan. Um, well, Elizabeth May just this morning was quoted as saying, just let the, let the oil and gas sector die. Let it go. Don't bother sending any help. Well, okay. If that's how you really feel, well then put your money where your mouth is. Stop driving around in your car. Stop feeding your home. Stop flying. Get on that horse and get yourself to Ottawa so you can show up at, at Parliament. Um, they can say that all they want. At the end of the day, the demand for the product that we have has not diminished. It's gone up. And so we are going to supply the, or the world with it one way or another. And at the rate that we're going, we're going to do it without Canada. It's my understanding that you want to see a date on a vote to secede. I do want to see the date set, yes. I wouldn't set it today, but I do want to see a date set. Is that because it focuses the attention fully and forces a more robust or complete debate? I think it's already been debated a lot, very much. Um, so I'm not sure that, that it needs to be debated any further. What does need to be debated is what is it going to look like? How are we going to make this happen? Mm -hmm. um, that is what we need time to do, is to get, get those conversations happening. For example, we're going to need trade agreements. Right now we're under all of Canada's trade agreements nationally. Well, now we're going to have to do that for ourselves, which is fine. We absolutely can, but we need time to make that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have to figure out a currency, which is fine. We can make that happen, but we're going to need time to make it. Um, th there's so many things. A constitution. <laughs> We're going to need a constitution to govern us and to live under. We just need a little bit of time to get those things in place. That's all. So that's why I say set the date, yes, but not yet. We've, we've, we've got a foundation to build first. It will be a long and very bumpy road ahead. I don't think long, but bumpy. Bumpy for sure bumpy for sure, but I don't think it needs to be long. If everybody really pulls together, um, as Albertans do, we're very good at that. We're very good at that. And, and once, once we're all pulling the rope in the same direction and we all see what the end product is going to look like and we have that vision, I don't think it'll take very long at all. We've got all the experts right here to do it. We will be watching.